Hello once again. Let's talk about media and communication. Uh, we're going to be looking today at Google News Initiative and its impact on journalism in Africa and in the Middle East. And we are going to um, talk with our guest today, Matthias Sanch. He's from the University of Amsterdam in the Netherlands and the Federal University of São Paulo in Brazil. And Matthias, we'll jump into, into that very soon. Um, will argue, will tell us that Google News Initiative is building an infrastructure of power, of dependency, that could actually pose some risks to responsible innovation in journalism. I'm going to question Matthias very soon. Uh, we will explore this. If this infrastructure could be used to control the flow of information, to undermine the independence of the news media. So let's talk about it. Matthias, welcome to our episode. Thank you for the invitation. I'm really happy to be here on behalf of my co-author to share a bit of what I have done in the last months in, in years, to be honest. Perfect. This research actually um, has featured in some news outlets uh, th uh, throughout the world. So let us know about uh, why this topic received so many so much attention. Uh, yeah, this is a really important topic. When we think about the media today, we know that there is like this very strong ties with big tech companies. And the big tech companies, mainly uh, Facebook, uh, which is Meta now, right? And Google. And this dependence on the big techs are putting the media, uh, mainly the media innovation uh, at serious risk. And why? Because um, there is an imbalance of power dynamics that that's an ad disadvantage for media organizations which are not that strong, don't have a lot of resources. And when we are talking about Africa and Middle East, this is particularly important because you know, when we think about the studies and they are generally focused on US and then we have some of Europe as well. And we have another scenario. So a scenario that, you know, organizations tend to have more money and some people interested in paying for that. While in Africa, there are other uh, more social, uh, uh, societal issues and that would attract way more uh, interest of these people than paying for news, for example. Although news are really important for the democratic issues that they have in this region, not only in Africa, but also Middle East and other parts in the global south. Besides that, there is also a large part uh, of uh, organizations that are st really struggling to bring technological innovation to their newsrooms. And not only in Africa and Middle East, but around the globe. And I think that's one of the things that also attract attention because these grants are the ones that they are using to deploy in these technological innovations. And usually when we're talking about smaller news outlets, their, their money comes from philanthropic organizations and they have their own agenda, their own interests. And usually it's not, you know, like helping these organizations to bring technology for, or, you know, emerging technology like AI for their business model. And this is something that makes really hard for, you know, um, these organizations to deploying these, you know, new tools or solutions using these innovations or emerging technologies. Mm -hmm. So, and the focus is on Africa, as you said, this geographical context with a completely different uh uh, financial, uh, economic uh, context. So when you started this research, what were you hoping to find here? So what was your expectation when you started the research? Oh, yeah. When we we started doing this, this that was more to understand, you know, what is the technological innovation in this region? But then we faced, you know, a lot of issues because first we saw that there is a very, you know, Africa is a really big continent and you have like very different level of developments in the, the country. And we, as we are covering Africa and Middle East, this is also another issue because, you know, we have a, way more resource in the Middle East than Africa. So the first thing that was really surprising for us is that, you know, like Middle East are trying to, you know, bring these emerging technologies, as I mentioned, AI, uh, like in really like strong projects that, you know, use machine learning and other uh, subfields of AI. While, you know, in Africa, some of these projects were really basic and trying to bring, you know, this basic technology to, you know, like somehow strong their strategy, their digital strategy. There was one project that I remember, and it was one of the first that we conducted an interview. And they were really trying to establish, you know, a website, a CMS that could connect, you know, the uh, the requests for, you know, like, because uh, they're like collecting pitching from, from young journalists. And they didn't have that. They were using before, like, uh, 
like a simple Google Forms. And then they have, you know, like this website so they could showcase what they are doing. This is something basic. And uh, when you look for what are being developed in other newsrooms, we're like trying, you know, like, for example, in Lebanon, we have we have a newsroom that was, although they were struggling because of the language was really challenged, they were trying to, you know, like using machine learning to understand what are being disseminated about this information and misinformation, um, Twitter, for example. And so these this creepings of the level of development are in technology in this project were something that really attracted my attention. And the other thing that uh, was like a bit surprised to me, but not really uh, a surprise, but was really emphasized by the, the respondents was the lack of, you know, like um, staff that they could hire to work in this organization because they were competing, you know, with fintechs or organizations that are in US and Europe, which the salaries are really higher. And, you know, these grants are co-founded. So part of this money comes from the organization, which is really hard for them. So, and then when they need to put, you know, like really high salaries, these grants are really short. And, so that's another thing that uh, I was like really surprised uh, throughout the process. And we are expecting to hear a lot of the struggles to have these people on board paying their salaries, but not competing with other industries that are way more stronger than the news media. Of course. So we have, uh, in one way, a diverse background in news newsrooms that you found in our interviews, this lack as well of financial capacity. So let us know now, after all this, the most important findings of your research. Yes. So the main finance is that, in our opinion, uh, the these big techs are the main custodians of the cutting edge in technology that we have today. So what happened, for example, in artificial intelligence that is now everyone's talking about after the, the buzz of this generative AI. Uh, so they have muscles to develop that, deploy that. And when they're we are talking about media, so they need to learn that, bring to their business model. And then when we talk about, you know, the structure of these organizations, they don't have, you know, technological teams that are really focused on bringing these technologies. So these grants help them to, you know, hire these people, but it is just for one year. So it's really short period of time. So when you see the description of the project, they seems like very interesting, very complex. But then when they get the grant and then they, try, they start implementing this project, they realize that these projects are way more complex than what are, um, you know, is they proposed there, back there. And what happened is that they need to, you know, make this a minimum viable product or what I mean by that. So a small version of that, test that and trying to, you know, see how they can continue develop, deploying this project further. Although so, some of these projects were still available, we saw that some of them still have bugs, you know, and they really require money to continue expanding on that and work on that. So that's something that I, I believe that one of the main findings of this project is trying to, you know, see how these organizations can continue to develop this emerging technology, which is going to be really important in media innovation in general uh, for their business strategy. And when we see, you know, like these uh, projects, uh, there is a huge potential to bring, you know, uh, some, you know, news, but part of the news value chain to change that and help journalists to, you know, focus on other tasks. But without the money and the support in the, for a long term, these projects will end. And some of the examples that we found there was like that. So they, are, they couldn't continue that later because it was, you know, the money was not enough. And also, as I mentioned, you know, this uh, like requiring them to pay higher salaries and really specialized skills that sometimes it's really hard for them to have them, you know, inside the newsrooms or even inside their country. And then they need to go to other countries to hire these people. And last thing that I think it's really important to highlight is that these organizations need to train these people as well mm -hmm. to for they understand what is journalism, mm -hmm. you know, how they could work with journalists. And this requires a lot of time. So during this one year, so they need to put these people that are really from the tech background to understand what is journalism, what are the news products that they're trying to develop. But then after one year, they cannot continue paying their salaries and then they go to other industries. And it's also an investment that is going, you know, and like being trivial your way. Um, yeah, so it's, these are some of the main mm -hmm. findings, but yeah, definitely you can find more on our paper.
And of course, this makes me brainstorm a bit, how uh, brainstorm together about potential uh, um, practical implications that we can look at uh, from now on. So is there something that either the governments or um, any organizations can do to you know, empower more the newsroom? Or is there something that the newsroom by themselves can do to empower themselves? Or uh, something connected to this question of media literacy that you were also you were also addressing. So I'm curious to know about policy implications now. What can you tell us? Yes, definitely. There is a lot of policy implications for that. First is like in relation to big tech companies. Mm -hmm. I think governments can you know like push them to like if they are financing the journalism, they are paying for the journalism. They pay pro properly. It's not only just small grants or programs that are bringing training for them but something that is more structured. At the same time, I think organizations also need to work together, you know, to be strong. And then when they have these organizations that these big tech companies that have a lot of power, that's the only way that they can, you know, like try to balance this power. I think media innovation is going to be uh, something really important for the future of media. And I think working together, they can diminish these barriers to, you know, develop some of this project. And also, you know, exchange resources that are not easy to find, as I was mentioning. Mm -hmm. And lastly, I think it's really, really important we rethink, you know, uh, about, you know, AI and technology and thinking that this is really important to have, you know, in the curriculums of, you know, like these uh, journalism courses and also prepare journalists that are already in the market for they understand what is AI, because it's not about only understanding, you know, what is AI, but how you can bring that for the news product. And trying to bridge these two topics, it's quite complex and not only requires time for, you know, structure and understanding what is being deployed, deployed around the world, but also it's important for, you know, these professionals to, you know, understand what are the issues that they can tackle using these AI solutions and what is not possible. Because sometimes, you, you know, there is also this trend to, oh, everything you need to use AI or emerging technologies or everything you need to use, you know, uh, technology to solve, but it's not necessary. And only if you have the, the knowledge and the research necessary, you can do that and in a proper way. Mm -hmm. And what are some hints for future research? Because there's a bit of subtopics here that we could address. So looking ahead, uh, research wise, so what are some hints for future research now? Definitely, there is a lot of uh, topics that could be explored for it. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, one thing that we are trying to explore further, because this is part of a large project, you see how these um, technologies are being, you know, deployed with these grants mm -hmm. in around the world, and mainly in the global south, because uh, something that happened with specifically with the Google News uh, initiative, Innovation Challenge, it start, uh, you know, mainly in Latin America, uh, North America, and then Africa, Middle East, and then Asia Pacific. Europe now has a version of that, and so you see a lot of projects being deployed in using these grants, but what are the differences across this region? What are the countries that are being these emerging technologies, how they are using that? So what are the best practices that other organizations can learn from that? So that's something that we're trying to look first from the global South perspective. It would be very interesting to look also in you know the North America because it's a lot of grants that were being given to this region that is not North America, but also only US and Canada. Mm -hmm. So it's a region that has a different, you know, like uh, media system. It's quite um, local news. It's quite strong in some regions. And you see a lot of money going to that. Mm -hmm. Also, it's really important to understand, you know, like how these um, emerging technologies, um, we have this imbalance of power and how this infrastructure are being deployed by these organizations and how these organizations are influencing, you know, media companies. Because some of these uh, tools are really uh, complex and, you know, you have to train data and et cetera. And yeah. media organizations don't have all the research to do that. And how we can, you know, like collaborate with this big tech and how they can like somehow help these organizations with their infrastructure and the power that they have to train data and, you know, like something that would be more useful for media. Mm -hmm. And I think there is also a lot of to explore in relation to the literacy, as we are discussing, you know, how these uh, different regions, different countries are understanding the AI literacy. And for example, some of these countries, they didn't receive any, you know, grant from Google. 
and why they are not receiving, you know, they are not aware of, because you need to propose, right, to Google, and they're struggling to understand how to bring these emerging technologies to their newsrooms. And if so, how we can help them to, you know, understand the use of that and how we can prepare them for the future, because otherwise they will always be um, like running, you know, to like competing with other organizations that are way more developed than them. Of course. I mentioned before that uh, this research has been uh, as, uh, was featured in some news outlets uh, around the world. Uh, for those who are watching us on the Let's Talk About Media and Communication website, below the video, you will be uh, you will have access to uh, some of these uh, resources. And Matthias, I would like to ask you now um, if there are, there is any other material that you could share with our listeners to further explore the this topic. Definitely. So one of my co-authors, Harris, and uh, have been re he wrote a really interesting article, you know, looking for all the grants um, that were being given by um, these two big techs around the world is something that's very interesting. There's a lot of uh, you know discussion about the media capture from this big tech, which is something I also recommend people read about that, and also about this power imbalance of big techs and news organizations. There are a lot of books on that, but yeah, I'm happy to feel free to reach me out and then i can also mm -hmm. share some other links perfect thank you for the invitation sure um so we have we have tried to um approach uh, a very wide complex topic here but i would like to close this episode by asking you to tell us in one or two sentences what should our audience remember about this talk so what's the punchline yes so what people should remember about this topic is that something that is not easy to solve. But I think it's some it's really important we start discussing about that. And mainly from a perspective from regions that are not being real, you know, like really considered or studied. And in this case, Africa and Middle East give you know a lot of uh insights about that because you know it's a region with different level of development using this technology and so if we start uh, discussing that and also about the infrastructure infrastructure of big techs i think it's the first step to change that you know and also help these organizations to prepare them for the future using you know media innovation technology and etc matthias it was a pleasure thank you thank you for the invitation for those watching us on youtube you can find all the resources that i mentioned before all the materials the link to the article um on the let's talk about media and communication website and you can also listen to this episode whatever you get your podcast. You can subscribe to our newsletter. You can follow us on Twitter at Cogitatio LTA. Several ways to, to engage with us.